Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the 5% video for Game Week 17. The 5% series is to do with getting you to finish in the top 5% globally, which means you'll hopefully do all right in your mini leagues. Now the game week we just had game week 16, if you had Salah and Son in your team and one of them was captain, you probably got a green arrow. If that wasn't the case for you, you probably got a red arrow. And that's it. But we will start in a minute by looking at what the scores were for the players for game week 16. Now, something uh, to think about is if you've still got your first wild card, you've only got four game weeks left to use it. So we're talking game week 17, 18, 19, 20. I think that's it, which is December the 30th is the deadline for using your first wild card. So you, you may want to use it this week if you want to shuffle a few players around, like you may want to offload Haaland with the idea of bringing him back in a few game weeks. Or else you may want to make one or two subs now and use your wild card in 19 or 20 to bring Haaland back in. But in game week 21, a load of players are going to be off, which is going to be Sun, Salah, Hee-Chan, Vissa and various other ones because of the African Cup of Nations and the Asian Cup. So most of us are going to have players we're going to have, we may want to move on. But... Depending on the country they play for, they may only be gone for one week, maybe two. They could be gone for a month if their team gets to the final. So we don't even know how long they're going to be gone for. So we don't have to offload the players, but we'd like to try and get 11 playing players if we can. Anyway, hopefully that roughly makes sense. Scores for game week 16. You'd have had one of these keepers. Pickford got 10, Flecken 3, and then Turner 3. So it's nice to see Turner back. That's the Nottingham Forest keeper. He had been dropped, but his substitute didn't seem to be doing any better. So it maybe he's back. That'd be nice. Ariola, the last one on this page, he's been out injured. And so they've been playing Fabianski. But Fabianski, since he's been playing, West Ham have been letting in goals. So I suspect once Ariola's fit again, he will be playing. So, um, so that's nice. Regarding the expensive defenders, Poro 5, Trent 4. The rest didn't do anything apart from... Trippier got minus one because Newcastle let in four goals against Tottenham. Trippier got his fifth yellow of the season. So he's going to miss next game week. And James was on for a few minutes before he went off injured. And now he's out of the game for weeks. The cheaper defenders, slightly cheaper defenders. Udogi got nine. None of the others did anything. And then the cheapest defenders did nothing. The sales got a minus one. But it's OK because across the board globally in this game, most managers remember... Got a green arrow if they had Salah, Sun, one of them captain. Otherwise, they got a red arrow. So it was all pretty much of a muchness. So there we go. Sun and Salah with their decent scores for the expensive midfielders. Apart from that, expensive midfielders did nothing. The cheaper midfielders did nothing. And then the cheapest midfielders did nothing. So it's the same for everyone. So it's kind of all right. Regarding the forwards... The more expensive page of forwards, Alvarez 5, Haaland didn't play, stress fracture apparently. The cheaper forward, Solanke keeps getting points, that's nice, Adibayo got points. He was probably on your bench because he's a bench fodder, but it's still nice to have him. He could have come on for you, I guess. Uh, and that's it. So now we're going to look at the players for game week 17. And you may have noticed the beginning of this video, I missed out the part where I go through the various colours and what they mean, because the suggestion was made that why don't I have that information on the page itself? So that's what I've done. You should see above my head there. I can't quite get it. <laughs> above my head, it says key to colours, and that's going to change according to the player we're currently talking about. So Edison is an OK player. They're at home to Palace next. Then they're not playing at all. Then away to Everton, home to Sheffield United. I wouldn't be buying him. I wouldn't be selling him. If I was wildcarding, I wouldn't be bringing him in. But he's all right. Raya is also OK. Arsenal have been a little bit dodgy recently defensively, but home to Brighton, I'm not feeling great about that because Brighton always score. Away to Liverpool, that's going to be interesting. Home to West Ham. But he's all right. Again, like Edison, I wouldn't be buying him probably. I wouldn't be selling him. Onana, Man United are awful. Onana's, he's, I think he's quite dodgy. I know they did have a few clean sheets recently, but they're coming against their way to Liverpool. So I'm expecting him to let in a lot of clean sheets then. He's sellable. There you go. The orange box above my head says sellable now. Onana's sellable. 
away to Liverpool, away to West Ham, West Ham can score, home to Aston Villa, but Aston Villa are doing very well at the moment, away to Forest. It's quite feasible, quite likely he'll get no clean sheets in the next four, I think. Sanchez, now here's a funny one. <laughs> he should be yellow because he's a new entry, but then he's injured. He got injured on Sunday, but his run of games is very nice. At home to Sheffield United, away to Wolves, not so good. Then home to Palace and away to Luton. So don't buy him, but because he's flagged. But if he's not flagged when you come to arrange your team, he is a good player to get. So pretend he's yellow, which means a new player, if he's not flagged when you do your team. But if he is still flagged, you want to be avoiding him for now. Johnston, so he went off injured and he's got a difficult run of uh, fixtures. I'm not saying he's a sell where you have to sell him because he's only a keeper. If you've got another keeper who's playing, that's all right. Definitely don't bring in any of these orange players at the moment, though. Flecken, he's all right. He's missing next game week, but he's okay. Pickford, Everton defensively are now starting to come good. So I think going forward, Pickford's an all right keeper. He was borderline green for me, which is goodbye. As in, he's good to buy, not goodbye. So Pickford's borderline green, but I have made him white because he's away to Burnley, but then away to Tottenham, home to Man City, away to Wolves. Three of those four, he's probably not going to get a clean sheet. Then the cheaper keepers, Ariola. I've marked him as sellable now. You can sell him if you want to. We don't know how long he's going to be out for. He's not great in goal, but he is nice and cheap at 4.2. Dubravka at 4.1. He's still worth having, but we need to reckon it might be another three, four game weeks or maybe two, three months, but he will almost certainly be getting moved on at some point, but he is only 4.1 million. And Turner, who we had a sellable last week, if he's got his place back, he's okay. And with, I think I've had one clean sheet from a goalkeeper this season after 16 game weeks. It's really quite difficult, or at least I'm finding it difficult, to choose who's going to be keeping clean sheets. So you, you just want someone in goal. And if you've got no one in goal because of injuries, it's possibly not even worth taking a hit to bring a keeper in because it's so hard to call at the moment. Regarding the expensive defenders, Trent, good player, green. Uh, away, no, at home to Man United. Man United are woeful. I think it's feasible. Liverpool are going to thrash Man United several goals to nil. But even if Liverpool do concede, he's got a reasonable chance, Trent, of getting an assist. So he's he's a green player. Trippier is obviously not green because he's not playing this week. He's he's serving a, uh, a one-match ban. I wouldn't be selling Trippier if I had him, and I do have it. I'm not selling him. If you wanted to sell him, you can, but I think you're going to be wanting him back for Luton and Forest, etc. So uh, he's definitely not orange, but you can sell him if you want to. Why he's OK. Arsenal have been letting in a few goals recently, but they've been playing good teams. Saliba, 0.1 cheaper than White. White has been playing 90 minutes again recently, so that's good. Porro is green. If you can get Pedro Porro into your team, you should do. He's a very attacking player and he's a defender. James, he's out for weeks now. Sell him, even if it costs you a hit. If you happen to have James, he's the same price as Pedro Porro. Just get Pedro Porro in if you've not got him already. Anderson. So Palace had a nice run of fixtures. That one is now over. Anderson's 5 million. There are better defenders for less. He's completely sellable. Obviously, don't buy him if you're wildcarding. And if you've got him, he's obviously fine to sell. The cheaper defenders. Simicast is still all right, only 4.9. Gabriel, 4.9. He's all right. Akanji, missing next week. Obviously, don't bring him in. But he is getting some game time. Home to Palace this week. May get a clean sheet if he plays. Cash, not getting 90 minutes most of the time. Now, he's he may well get 90 minutes in the next few game weeks for a couple of games. It could be Sheffield United at home and Burnley at home. That could be two nice clean sheets. He may get an attacking return. But that may not happen. He may not get 90 minutes, may not even get 60 minutes, may not get a clean sheet. So he's absolutely sellable if you want to. Free up some space, free up a bit of cash, get someone better in. Udogi, 4.8, same price as cash. Another attacking defender, he's worth getting. If I could only have Udogi or Poro, I would go for Poro. If you want them both or just Udogi, that's fine as well. Colwell's nice and cheap. Chelsea have a nice run of fixtures coming up. So he's pretty good. Pinnock, he's not even playing next week. He's, if you've got him, you could switch him through Doggy or Colwell. That would be a good move if you can afford to. Um, but you don't need to sell him at all. And the cheapest defenders, 
So new entry here, Senesi. Bournemouth have been doing quite well defensively recently. Senesi has got a couple of attacking returns the last game weeks. He's all right. He's nice and cheap, 4.4. And even if he doesn't work out, he's kind of then a grey bench fodder anyway. Just like Maguire, who's bench fodder, only 4.3. LaSalle's only 4.2. Kabore, 4 million. Regarding the expensive midfielders, Salah is still green, even though he's off in a few weeks playing Man United. I expect him to do well against United there. Sun seems to be good anywhere against anyone. He's absolutely worth having. So if you're wildcarding, definitely try and get these two in, even though they're both off in a couple in a four or five game weeks. Saka's fine. I did have him green. I've made him white, but he is like Watkins, very consistent, often getting five, six, seven points a game week. There are cheaper midfielders who will be more explosive sometimes, but Saka is quite consistent. Rashford, finally, if you've got him, get rid of him. Even if it costs you four points, I say it's still worth getting rid of Rashford. Odegaard's all right. Fernandez, Fernandez is the best United player. He's banned this coming game week because of five yellow cards, but he's only missing away against Liverpool. But then United are away to West Ham, home to Villa, away to Forest. Fernandez, in my mind, is their best player. If you want to sell him, put someone else better in midfield, that's fine. If you have him, you want to keep him, that's okay as well. If you're wildcarding, don't bother getting him. Martinelli, I think he's not feeling very well. That's why I think he missed the game, the most recent game. So um, I wouldn't bring him in. We don't know his status. I believe at the time of recording, he's flagged as not playing. But you absolutely don't have to sell him. If you've got a lot of players that are flagged, obviously you want to make some subs. But you don't have to. But he is sellable. It's fine to sell him for a different midfielder. Regarding the cheaper midfielders, Bowen, he's still all right. Foden's all right. I would have made him green, except he's missing next game week. But he's home to Palace, missing. Away to Everton, home to Sheffield United. He's pretty good. Sterling got a nice run of fixtures. But Chelsea are struggling in certain areas. But Chelsea have a very nice run of fixtures. So he's all right. Embremo. When I did the last 5% video, because of how close the game week, the games, what are the game weeks, I had to record it, park through the game week, and then we knew he was injured and he was out. That's why he wasn't marked as red in the last game week video. He is now. If you've got him, get rid of him. He's out for a long time. Even if it costs you 4 million, get rid of him. So, yeah. Even if it costs you 4 points, rather, not 4 million. DRB's not getting enough game time. Villa have some quite nice fixtures. He's sellable. You can keep him if you like. He might do well. Sell him if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. Mitzimer's fine. He's a good player. Gordon's still cheap enough to have. Home to Fulham. Gordon's been doing very well at home. So home to Fulham, away to Luton, home to Nottingham Forest. Two of the next three game weeks, possibly through the next three game weeks, reasonably good chance he's going to get some decent points. So, for example, going back to this page here, if I had Diaby or Embremo, Move on to Gordon. Very, very easy choice. Easy to do. Uh, Ward Prowse is OK. We're on to cheap players now. He turns OK. He will be off. Gibbs White. I quite like him, even though he's not done much recently. I, I'm i fine having him. I don't have him. If I had him, I would be fine to have him. Uh, and they've got, some, they've got three of the next four at home. Fine. Neto. I've made him sellable, but I think this might be the last game week he's missing. And then... He may well be back from injury, but of course they may manage his minutes. So he may come come on for the last 20 minutes. The first game he's back then, he might play 50 minutes and then he might be on for 90 minutes. But if you've held on to him this long, you might want to keep holding on to him. If you've got more important things to do, that's fine. Palmer, he's still cheap enough to get. He's a very good player for Chelsea. Chelsea have nice fixtures. Absolutely worth having Palmer at the moment. Nakamba, he's missing the next game week, I believe. I think he's suspended for one game week. But he's nice and cheap. He would just sit on your bench anyway, normally. Regarding the forward, so Haaland is sellable. At the time of recording, we don't know whether or not he's playing the next game week against Palace. But then he's missing a game week. So he is a big, big gamble. Lots of managers are selling him. If you keep hold of him and then the flag disappears Saturday morning or Friday evening... That's when the deadline is. And you happen to captain him. He might do really well. He could get loads of points. But there's a risk 
that he's nearly fit and he's on the bench and he comes on for a few minutes gets you one point or he may not play at all if he doesn't play at all that is a lot of money you've got sitting on your sitting on your bench in the fancy world doing nothing so you could sell him and get it make sure you've got for example Salah and Son and if you're wildcarding you could actually have quite a good team I've not got Haaland so I've not got this dilemma so that's quite nice for me uh I would suggest you just go on the news whether he's flagged or not and it's a really difficult call if I did have him I think I would sell him I would, and just think the next two game weeks I've definitely not got him and I might bring him back because there are other forwards that are going to be all right Watkins Green not super explosive but he ticks along he's like Saka but as a forward player Jesus is all right they've got some nice fixtures Arsenal Darwin's been a bit disappointing but home to Man United this game week so I'm expecting Liverpool to do a lot of damage to Man United. Alvarez. Now if Haaland's out, the thinking is he could be on penalties. He'll be playing maybe as the striker. He could do well this game week. Of course, he's missing next game week, so he's not green. If you've got him, he's fine to keep. If you've not got him, personally, I wouldn't bother bringing him in. Hoyland, another one. He didn't work out. Fine. That's it. He's out the door. The cheaper forwards, Solanke, he's still green. He's been green for a while. Absolutely good buy. Vissa, he's missing game week 18. And then a week or two after that, he's going to be off to the African Cup of Nations. So don't bring him in. If you want to move him on, that's fine. If you want to keep him because the next two games he's playing is home, that's fine as well. Yeah, well, Pedro, now we're just on to uh, cheap players. He sit on your bench often, as will Morris, as will Adibayo, who scored last game week, as would Archer. So bench fodder, try not to have more than three grey players in your team. Most of the time, these are just sitting on your bench. The reason we have them is so we've got more money to spend on other players. The goalkeepers, right, the bench order. I'm now going to make suggestions for the bench order. And I'm making suggestions for captains as well after that. These are just suggestions. I put a lot of thought into this. And when I look at other content creators and sites that predict points, I know they disagree with me, but that's fine. You do whatever you want to, but if you want to copy this exactly, that's absolutely fine as well. So the first goalkeeper you see that you have, I suggest you put on your bench. So if you've got John Stone for Palace, away to Man City, I suggest he goes on your bench. And in any case, he may be injured. If you have Turner, they're at home, but it's to Tottenham. We'd expect Tottenham to score goals in that. Ariola. May not even be fair if he is at home to Wolves. Wolves have been scoring goals recently, so wouldn't expect a clean sheet there. Onana away to Liverpool. I wouldn't expect clean sheets there. Flecken at home to Aston Villa. Flecken at home to Aston Villa, rather. I would expect there's a reasonable chance of him not getting a clean sheet. Then I've got Rare at home to Brighton. Now, I know a lot of probably bookie sites will be predicting Arsenal got a reasonable chance of a clean sheet. However, Brighton on a ridiculous run of scoring and letting in goals every game so that's why he's down there so if I had Pickford and Raya I would actually play Pickford away to Burnley rather than Raya at home to Brighton because I think Brighton are going to score and Everton have been doing well recently but it's up to you but these are my suggestions Dubravka at home to Fulham Fulham have scored 10 goals the last two game weeks and Newcastle have let in is it seven goals the last two game weeks so it may not be a clean sheet, but statistically he's got a reasonable chance of having a clean sheet. Edison at home to Palace. Now we're going to a pretty good chance of a clean sheet. And then Sanchez, if you buy him because he's not flagged and he looks like he's going to play at home to Sheffield United, he's got the best chance probably of a clean sheet this week. So we've just looked at the goalkeepers. You have 13 players left, 10 of which you'll be playing. So what we do is we look at which three to put on the bench and then the other ten sort themselves out. What I suggest is the first player I show you that you've got goes to position three on your bench. The second player, position two. The third player you see that you've got, position one. These are suggestions. If you want to do something different, that's fine. So Trippier is not playing on the bench. Fernandez isn't playing. Neto's not playing. Anderson's not worth playing. Nakamba's not playing. And then it'd be Kabore, Cash... Morris Maguire, who's away to Liverpool. Maybe they get an own goal to make it more interesting. Gio Pedro, Archer, Adibayo, Pinnock, Diaby, Gibbs-White, Lascelles, Visser, 
Mitzimer. So we're getting into good players now. If we're lucky, you've now got three players on your bench, but maybe not, so we keep going. He Chan, Ward Prowse, Sinisa, Simakas, Udogi, Akanji, Martinelli, Darwin, Gabriel Saliba White. Now, if you have more than one Arsenal defender, I'd suggest you play one and put one of the other ones on your bench if you've got another player that's maybe in what's going to be the second row here. Because otherwise, it'd be too frightening for me. They're, yes, they're at home, but they're playing Brighton. Brighton always find a way to score. So a chance of a clean sheet isn't great, I think. And then Colwell for Chelsea, Jesus, Odegaard, Bowen, Gordon, Trent, Watkins. Regarding the captaincy, we've got a bit of a choice this week. Now, I have put Haaland in there. If he's not flagged and we know he's playing at home to Palace, he is a good captaincy choice. However, if he is flagged or there's some doubt, I absolutely personally wouldn't be captaining him. But Salah is a very good choice at home to Man United and Son is a good choice because they're forever scoring goals. So uh, certainly Salah and Son are good captaincy choices. If Haaland's not flagged, it looks like he's playing. He's also a good captaincy choice. Other players that might be worth a punt, we have Saka, Bowen and Solanke even. So I'd suggest make one of these your captain, one of these your vice captain if you can. If you can't do that because you don't have two of these players, then look for one of the players that was green in the previous slides and choose them. As for the background image, in case you were wondering, so Haaland, if he's not going to play, our coffee machine at home broke yesterday, so he could pop over here and make our coffees. He might as well make himself useful. That's what the picture is, him as a barista. So there we have it. That's the plans for game week 17. Hopefully that made sense. And if you've got any questions regarding this, feel free to put it in the comment. I usually manage to reply to comments before the game week starts. And I think the game week starts on Friday evening this week, so don't miss it. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>